Hey everybody. Today we're getting started with version control using Git. Git is widely used software for tracking changes to files that's especially useful when you're collaborating with others and those changes um, might be different across different machines and need to be reconciled later. There's lots of very high-powered information about how to use Git out there on the web that seems to be targeting you know, computer programmers and people with deeper knowledge of the uh, intricacies of the, how their machines work. I want to talk a little bit more at the level of people that are just doing data science using R. Um, Git comes from the computer programming world originally and has been adopted by data scientists over time. It really is a fundamental tool of the trade at this point, but uh, for most of us, our needs aren't quite at that same level. So um, I want to get us started. My primary reference throughout this vid is going to be a lovely resource called um, Happy Git for, and GitHub for the R user by Jenny Bryan and others. Highly recommended if something in this video um, is not going to the level of depth that you need, you'll probably find the answers that you need here. The first thing we're going to want to do is to get Git installed if we don't already have it. So let's see, first of all, if we have it. And we're going to do that by going to the terminal. There's a tab here right next to the console. We're not actually going to be entering our code here. We're going to be entering some commands directly into, our, um, into the console. And so the command we want, whether you're on a Mac or PC, is which git, G-I-T. And since I already have it installed, I'll get a directory there. In my case, it's user bin git. Um, at this point, you may get a prompt asking if you'd like to install it, in which case you can go ahead and say yes. Um, if not, then your path is going to diverge here a little bit depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC. If you're on a Mac and you need to get this installed like I do, then you can just type into your console what I have here written, what I've written here, git config. And uh, if you enter that and you don't have git installed, Mac will automatically prompt you to install it. So you can just go ahead and follow those, command, those um, prompts. If you're on a PC, you're going to want to install Git for Windows from gitforwindows.org. There's a link here, and I'll put this up on my GitHub page, so it'll be publicly available to you if you want to copy and paste that link there. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll also put it in the comments down below. That'll take you to this page, and you can just go to the download page and go from there. Um, all of your defaults, all the defaults that are proposed by either Git for Windows or the Mac equivalent, are going to be fine, although I do want to say that some of the references I've seen have suggested that you may need to make a change to one of the uh, um, one of the options to um, specify that you want to allow Git both from the command line and using third-party software. We want to do both of those things. Our studio is third-party software, so we have to allow that. When I went to install Git on a new PC a little while ago, it didn't add it. It had that as the default, um, but I just want to say out loud that other people have uh, potentially not had that experience. Okay, so now that you've got Git installed, you need to um, actually get it configured. And since we're R users, we're going to do that from within R. Um, you'll find lots of instructions online for doing that through the console if you want. But um, the use this package, which is one of the, uh, the lovely um, tidyverse adjacent packages put out by Posit, makes this super easy. So we load up uh, the use this package, and then we will use the use underscore git underscore config command. And you'll need to enter a username and a user email in there. Obviously, you'll want to change username, your name, and your email.com. Um, you should pick the email that you want to be associated with your sort of public data science self. If you already have a GitHub account, you're going to want to use the same email address as for that one. If you don't yet, then uh, we'll be making a GitHub account in my next video. So um, you should pick the same email address that you plan on using there. The next step is to add version control to an actual project. So um, the idea with version control is it's going to track changes to a finite set of files that we define, perhaps something within a folder or a set of folders. In data science with R, that typically means an RStudio project. So I'm already working inside a project. I started a new one just a little bit ago called Git for R users. And I'm going to go into it and set an option so that I now have um, uh, access to Git. And so I am going to go to Tools, Project Options, and then Git SVN. 
and I'll have a drop down menu for Git version control studio. And I will choose Git. And it will ask me to confirm. And OK, here's where I have to do the restart. I knew there was in there somewhere. Um, I will go ahead and do that restart. Um, and since my computer is starting to get a little old, it will take just a second. When this comes back up, you will see now down here next to my help pane, next to my help tab, I now have a Git tab indicating that I really am up and running. Great. So um, again, Git is going to track changes. This is different than just saving things. It's um, think of it like saving, but then also putting down a signpost every now and again. I think of uh, my work on an individual project as being kind of like a highway. Every now and again, I'm going to lay down a marker at the side of the road indicating that uh, this is an interesting point where I might want to come back to. Um, it only works on save files, but saving files doesn't automatically mark them for that kind of tracking. So um, Git for our users is already saved. I've got that saved. Let's go ahead and mark what we've already got and track it. So I'm going to go over to the Git tab now. And uh, you'll see the things that I've already modified. Users, um, Git for our users .r proj and Git for our users .r, as well as an invisible file, Git ignore. And that's a text file where you can specify files that uh, you never want Git to track changes to. I'm not going to talk about that particularly today. So we're going to pick the ones that we want to uh, um, commit to our repository, which is to say where we want to add them to our depository and have tra changes tracked. So I've checked them all, and then I'll click Commit. When I do that, I'll get a nice little staging area. And uh, we can get some previews. And um, as we'll see in a minute, here we'll be able to see potential changes, things that, uh, that we've updated since our last commit. You always need to add a commit message. This is something that should be short and brief, but it should be enough to uh, remind future you or future collaborators of the purpose of what's going on. Typically, write, we write this in present tense. So um, I will use initial commit for this one. And then we click commit. We get a little bit of a, a pause, and then we're all set. So now our changes have been tracked. So then we go on, we do a little bit more work. Let's uh, maybe get a new section. I'm using uh, Command Shift R to get a new section label, by the way. Um, edit and track changes. And I see I capitalized my S in setup, so I'll capitalize my E here. So um, let's do lots of new code. And then let's save our file. And let's make a commit for this as well. In the real world, you will have made a bunch of changes, potentially worked on many files, maybe added some new data sets to your project. Um, a lot more time would have elapsed. So I'm doing something that is ridiculously short in between commits. So I'll stage it, commit, put in a new message. Um, how about just in this case, I'll put uh, um, add comment for demo, and I'll commit that. Great. OK, so um, right away, you can see that we have a Changes tab here that will potentially give us a list of all the things that we've done, um, that all of our track changes, all of our commits. So we can go back to our initial commit and go back to the Add Comment for Demo and see the changes. So if I look down here in the window down below, I can see the actual things that have been changed. In general, you should think of making a commit to your repository as being more committal than just a save. When you save something, it's because you have made some changes. You don't want to lose them um, if there's a power outage or something even more severe than that. When you make a commit, um, you are essentially saying, this is something I might want to return to later. And so that doesn't necessarily mean your project is done, of course, but it should mean that you are at a reasonable stopping point. It's great to do lots of commits. There's not really a huge cost to making lots of commits, except for the fact that over time, this history will start to get um, cluttered and potentially less useful to you if you're going back to, uh, to try and actually make heads or tails out of what you've done over time. 
So in general, I try and commit regularly, but um, not just every time I make a save. The next thing I want to say is that occasionally you will have things go very, very wrong. And one of the attractions of Git is that you can go back to previous versions of your files. And there's a whole art to this. It can get pretty complicated. But uh, I want to show you just the very most basic thing that you might want to do, which is to revert to the last commit that you've made. Now, before you do this, you really should ask yourself, seriously, do I really want to do this? Is there no better option? And um, there's at least two reasons that I can think of off the top of my head for, uh, for not just reverting to a previous commit, even though it might seem like the easiest way to go. The first is that it's, um, it's going to go back wholesale. It's not just an undo button that takes off one change. It's going to remove all the changes since your last commit. And uh, you can't necessarily guarantee that your mental map of all the changes that you've made is, uh, is exactly the same as the changes that have been made, even if you look pretty closely at the differences in your history file, in, the, in that history, um, history that we're seeing there. The second thing is that this is uh, irreversible. Once you... Um, once you undo, once you um, revert to a previous commit, you can't go back. Okay, now all that said, let's go ahead and revert to our previous commit. And we're gonna do this from the terminal. In general, when you're working with Git, you're putting commands in the terminal, not in uh, the console in our studio or somewhere else. RStudio provides some tools for doing things with, uh, with version control in Git, such as the, the Git pane down here. But uh, if you want to go beyond just those very, very basic things, including reverting to a previous commit, you need to get into the terminal. So um, to, when I revert to my previous commit, I'm expecting that I will lose some stuff over here. That's the stuff that I'm actually trying to undo right now. Um, I'll resize this terminal window so we can see everything. And the command I want is git reset dash dash hard head capitalized and then an up caret and this is just going to take my version back one there we go and you can see that uh, right away like magic the uh, file I was just working in reverted to the previous version again this isn't something that you can undo if you just need to undo one or two changes that you've made I would either do that by hand or using the undo commands on your machine now, it is possible to go back more than one commit just by repeating that command that I just did, just once again with the git reset hard head to go back another commit. But um, that just multiplies the danger um, of going back one commit. Again, your mental map gets more vague and you're more likely to lose pieces of code or even entire files that you had forgotten about. Okay, so that's all I really want to do with Git today. I think the next thing up is to get us coordinated with GitHub, to get us up and running on GitHub so that we can actually start collaborating so that we can bring other people's projects onto our machines, recommend changes via GitHub, um, and to put our work onto GitHub so that others can do the same for us.